Hi. Hi hello, welcome back. Welcome back to another Onkruid video. As you notice, it's a talking video, but I'm sitting down and that is because it is too hot in Belgium right now to move any more muscles than are necessary. I feel like I should already get like a medal of honor given to me by the king himself for turning off my fan just to record these videos. So you guys owe me big time. I also need to keep the window closed while recording because otherwise the passing cars make too much background noise. Really the sacrifices I make. Today we're talking about a Tom Clancy book written by Jeff Rowan. So it's not originally by Tom Clancy, but it is in the French franchise and it's called Op Center God of War. And we're here to answer a simple question as always when it comes to books. Should you read it? Fans of the series know that even though it's such a simple question, the answer here is not always simple. Today the answer might seem simple, yeah, but there are small letters attached as well. You should read it if you really don't know what to read or if you're already a fan of the genre of like the political, military, bio-terror, tactical, espionage novels. A spoiler alert is of course warranted, but I'm quickly gonna summarize the main topics in the story. Although the title might suggest otherwise, the book actually has nothing to do with a crazy bald Greek guy who wants to beat up girls for sport. It's not about that God of War. A team of illegal diamond miners accidentally uncover a secret that has been long kept shut deep beneath the ground. They use drills and a kind of acid to dig into a wall to see if there are valuable rocks there, but in the process they kind of eat away at the edges, at the walls of a bunker. A bunker that was developed by higher ups in South Africa, where the, South Africa, where the story takes place. A bunker that was developed to kind of keep everything out and also especially keep everything in. Because what is inside the bunker is a long kept secret and apparently it's a bioterror virus. And it is a virus that really has the power to, in the snap of a finger, destroy the entire world world possibly. To give an example of how deadly it is, the story kicks off because just a regular old commercial flight full of innocent people flies over the site where the agent, the biological agent was discovered and the plane, everybody on the plane gets violently sick and they just die because the pilot dies because of the virus. Originally the virus was developed as kind of a cure for AIDS but it didn't work out all that well. So because the chemical that they did create, even though it was not a cure for AIDS, was still so disastrously dangerous and potentially really like cataclysmic if given to the wrong people, they decided to hide it away in a very cold part of South Africa near the pole. The, the South Pole, right? Yeah, because we're in the South. Is the South Pole the one with penguins? Or is that the North Pole? Doesn't matter at all. International politics on a large macro scale get involved and then the big players that are mainly mentioned in the story are the United States and China. But we know that the country of South Africa itself is also kind of coming to check out like, hey, what's this over here? What's happening? Can we do something with this? And Russia is also looming in the darkness, waiting for somebody to screw up to make a mistake so that they can step in and kind of try to rule the world because they own a very, very potent biochemical weapon. Next to this macro climate, this zoomed out climate of international politics and all different continents and countries in the world being involved and being interested in what's going on, it's actually the micro players, the small pawns that play the most important role throughout the story and throughout kind of the solution given to the problem that the diamond miners discovered. In this book, this thrilling page turner, if I do say so myself, we follow the Black Wasp operation center. They are a very special, secluded, secretive branch of the American special services of the military, something like that. And we follow the two people that are really on the ground doing the dirty work. And we also follow two of the higher ups in that operation. Both of those teams of two play an important role and they do, do, they do so simultaneously, which makes for an interesting structure of the book where kind of multiple stories on multiple locations in the world are told at once most of the time. And how do they resolve the problem or try to prevent the problems from coming up? That's exactly what you will find out once you read the book for yourself. On the slide you can see Jeff Rovin, the author, the original author. He wrote a bunch of other books, but this was, I think, his first entry into the Tom Clancy franchise. And then we also see Tom Clancy himself, the original big man, the big boss man. The title we're talking about today was published in 2020 and it contains about 350 pages. My copy contains my copy contains 379 pages actually. As you all know, we always go over some of the pros and some of the cons in my personal opinion about the book and then finally we hit you with the conclusion. The first pro I want to mention is that I think the character writing is actually great, but 
only in the characters' behaviors and how they interact with each other. And because there is a but part, it means that another part of the character writing is a bit sluggish, but that's something for the next slide. My favorites for this pro are the two op-center field work people, like the two that really get down to business, the two that do the actual combat operations. They showed great chemistry in between each other and the way they thought about certain, certain endeavors, they thought about certain problems that arose and the way they acted upon those problems impulsively, but also well thought out, really provided a nice balance. Second pro, second good part about the book in my opinion is that the themes are very topical. They are very much related to what has been going on lately in the world and they are also just cool. You might have heard about this little pandemic that has been going on the last couple of years and there's some clear inspiration being taken from the actual real life COVID situation in the writing of this book. Surgical masks play a very important role for example because everybody in the vicinity of the virus canisters always wants to keep on a surgical mask to protect themselves. And just the fact that it is about a virus in general, the fact that it is a virus that gets transported throughout the air and infects people throughout their airways. I mean, you can kind of see the similarities for yourself, I think. At the same time, more long-running analogies are also hard to miss. One that is explicitly mentioned in the book is of course Pandora's box. When the, can when the canisters with the virus get opened, the whole world is in danger. And not in the form of an analogy, but just in the form of still being discussed, is apartheid. The regime in South Africa that kind of like instilled institutional racism starting from 1948. And although they, we are led to believe that it is actually not there anymore, it has been abolished by the law, it still lingers on in some contexts. And I think that's also strongly displayed in the book in a very thoughtful, subtle, but still like um, intriguing manner. Third and central point of these five pros, and I put it in the center because I think it is the book's strongest point, or it is, at least for me personally, is the brutal description of the virus and its workings. This really distills this feeling of urgency and of panic in the reader, and it kind of puts you in the shoes of the Black Wask operators, and you realize that they also probably realize that they really have to act quick because they are dealing with something menacingly disturbing, something disgusting, something destructive, something that can really just destroy people from inside themselves. And it is so viciously described in the book that you kind of can't do anything else but like wince at like, oh damn, that's rough. And that instills this sense of urgency, this sense of tension. It's exciting. You want to see if they are able to get there in time because time is ticking. And, and the feeling of that time bomb being ticking is emphasized further by how brutally vicious the virus is portrayed in my opinion. I really, really enjoyed that part of the book. They don't skim on like very visceral details and I think that lends itself well to a thriller. And then the second to last pro is that I find it a beautiful combination of the macro and micro parts I talked about. We don't just see the op centers main two dudes shooting around, killing and blasting like Danny DeVito. Anyway, I started blasting. Bam. We really see what comes before the ground operations. All the administrative work, all the kind of meetings that have to be done by the people higher up, the people in their chairs smoking their cigars while, other die for, while others die for them, but that's not what I was talking about. But yeah, for example, like the entire first half of the book almost is just purely diplomatic. It's people discussing what the best next step is and I find it beautifully portrayed how you don't only have to take into account what will be the best step for you and your own interests but you need to also take into account how to not offend other players in the game. You're really always walking on ice and you need to be careful where you step which is something that literally happens in a book as well. Might be an analogy to the overarching structure itself. Who knows? And in some ways this is the scariest part of, of it all. The public, the people that are just working on the fields, the people that provide your bread and my bread in the morning, they are left in the dark almost completely. And it's the decisions of a few single people that are still just humans, but because of the political structures in place, they are more mighty and more influential. And the decisions of those few, of those single few, can actually like shape the fate of an entire nation full of people. And I think that is definitely something that happens in real life as well, while we're not aware about it. Think about a war in Ukraine, for example. Just because one guy gets his ego bruised, he decides to invade an entire country. Talk about compensation for 
I don't want to get murdered. Now, in this book, the politicians are mostly portrayed as benevolent people that want the best for everyone, for the entire world, not only for their own nation. But I think that in reality, corruption and um, being self-centered not thinking about others is way more prevalent than is actually described here in the books. And then the final point, if you don't care about remembering all kinds of details like location names or names of persons or which person is at which point in the story and which players are also present, just if you don't care about specific details, the book lends itself extremely well to the approach of playing an internal movie while you're reading it. I almost always read like this and especially in books like this where you are just kind of flooded with names of South African people and places. You just like make this image of a certain place name. You don't even probably read it correctly but you just know that when I see this place name I have to imagine this place in my head and the book really really is well suited for that in my opinion. As with everything in life of course it's not just positive. One of the first cons is kind of directly related to what I just mentioned and that is that that movie approach is sometimes just necessary because I feel like sometimes they just overload you with names names of people names of places names of military units names of operating systems on military computers names of weapons names of helicopters all those things are just kind of flooded on top of you it's like a tsunami of details if you really want to remember everything and then as i mentioned before other than in the behaviors i feel like the characters are a bit bland they are a bit one-sided they are a bit like uh, black and white they're not there's not really that much vitality not that much fluency there's not that much transition in what they feel or think and their their thinking when it is described is kind of like really immature it's not that advanced they don't worry about the impact of their behaviors for example they just do what they're told to and i think that's of course a great asset for people in military operations where they have to be willing to sacrifice themselves even for the greater good but i think for reading about it it's a bit less enjoyable my biggest con is unbalanced pacing as I said, the first half, it might even be more of the book, is related or is kind of dedicated just to the diplomatic side of things. People discussing about the steps, people thinking out the operations. And of course, I found it interesting to read about that. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been a con. Uh, it wouldn't have been a pro rather as well for me. But I think Jeff Rovin stretched that part out a little bit too far. I think the book could have been at least 100 pages shorter. And the fourth and final con is that, well, I kind of found it also. But I definitely found that as a point of critique online is that people found it to be a confusing book, a confusing build-up, poor structuring, and some people describe it as not fitting into the Tom Clancy line of work, which is of course something I cannot form an opinion about because this is my first Tom Clancy book ever. My first military thriller book, I guess, ever, except for War Games by David Biscoff, maybe, but I might also be making a video about it in the future, so my mouth is sipped and I can probably kind of relate to it. I think if Tom would be able to rise from his grave, he would have a couple of mean words to say about some of these wannabes entering his realm. But the, yeah, the structuring of the book is sometimes a bit lackluster. There are jumps in time and jumps in place where really there shouldn't have been and the chapter should have just continued. And sometimes they are just purely done for the sake of building suspense. But if you do it 10 times in a row, it loses its effect. If you end 10 chapters in a row immediately on like cliffhangers, you just get used to it and it's not that dramatic or anything anymore. Additionally, there was quite a lot of mentions of previous missions, which I presume are displayed in previous books. And for somebody that is newly entering into the domain of Tom Clancy, it's quite hard to follow them. Now for the conclusion, and I must say that I am a bit biased. I think I would have been rougher on this book if I didn't pick it up in the context where I did. In the background, you can see the Swiss city of Kur, which is very close to where I was on vacation a couple of weeks ago and we went here one day and in that day one of our activities that we did was going to this giant secondhand store and that's where I actually picked up my copy. It was in like this huge box filled with German books that were all sold for 50 cents and just like if I would have been in a candy shop, if you get that reference one respect point for you, I was like yeah I want to spend some of my money here on that sweet sweet literary goodness and this was the only English book in that box I looked through every single book and I thought yeah I've been looking for English books for so long now I can't just let this lay here and I picked it up and I'm very glad I did 
It was a nice introduction into the series, but therefore whenever I think about this book and look at it and stuff, I get remembered of my amazing travels through Switzerland. So I think that's why it has a bit more of a positive connotation in my mind than some other readers might, might um, experience with it. All in all though, for that small price, it was not a regrettable purchase at all. If I was you, I wouldn't pay $15 for it. But if you do find it on the cheap, if you find it in a little bargain, maybe on the side of a street somewhere from a very kind old lady that is selling her old Pokemon cards, her game cartridges, and you're just having a nice yard sale, homemade lemonade for all the people that stop by, and you see this book in a box, buy it from her. Maybe even give her a dollar more than you originally were charged for it, because I mean, yeah, it's worth that. It's worth the extra dollar to make a cute person's day a bit better. And it made my days a bit better. I finished it in like two or three days, so it only had a short effect, but that's people speaks more and more to the page turner characteristic of the book, I presume. Thanks a whole lot for watching. Give it a shot if you find it and see you in the next one. Bye bye.